Good evening everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj, your host. I'm meeting you after such a long gap of about three months simply because uh, I was pretty busy and there was nothing much happening in the Indian economy. Actually, I was waiting for the results of the Lok Sabha election. I was just waiting for the new government to form and now that picture is clear. Now we have Mr. Narendra Modi as uh, India's new Prime Minister and BJP party, his BJP party has won the uh, majority 272 seats in the Lok Sabha. That means they are now pretty much uh, free to kind of form, implement the kind of policies they want to implement and uh, I will discuss all those policies as the time passes by but you know as I said I was waiting for this results to come out and the new government to form because you know in the last three months or so there was nothing much happening. Uh, RBI's you know, actions were also weighted because what is happening is that uh, Narendra Modi is new prime minister and as many of you are knowing that people have huge expectations from him and uh, I personally am from Gujarat so you know, I know what kind of, you know, a person Narendra Modi is and whether he can deliver the goods which people are expecting. We'll discuss about that in a while. In a short answer, of course, is no. Uh, no politician and no government can fulfill the expectations of all the people, even if they are very honest about their intentions. And in fact, that honest intentions of doing good itself is the most dangerous thing because uh, just good intentions are not enough as we... Uh, as those who are aware about different science, especially economic science, know, know already, uh, what is uh, important is that people are expecting so many things from Narendra Modi, especially on the economic front. They think that Narendra Modi can uh, turn around the things and bring the economy out of the recession and the growth rates are declining around 4.5%. So they think that he can kind of boost it up to 8%. Many are also expecting him to kind of uh, uh, handle or battle out the inflation monster. They think that he will, he's the one who's going to slay the inf inflation monster. And uh, many people are also expecting that he's going to, you know, kind of create employment for people and this and that, and basically going to make India a powerful country and foreign policy front also. What we have to see is that. Uh, after coming into power, he hasn't done much on economic front. Right now, he's kind of advising his ministers, council of ministers to prepare 100 days agenda or something like that. Nothing concrete is coming out so far uh, from the new finance minister also, Mr. Arun Jaitley. We have to see what steps they're going to uh, raise. But uh, importantly, what is important is uh, uh, that uh, people are advising Narendra Modi, the kind of uh, advice they are giving right now. I'm going to talk about them and uh, recently RBI also announced its quarterly monetary policy. So what Rajan, the RBI governor, is doing, he met Narendra Modi. Obviously Narendra Modi and Arun Joitli and other guys, the BJP party and the business lobby, which is with the BJP party, they are pressurizing Rajan to reduce the interest rate and kind of revive the economy. They think that high interest rate is the major factor which is choking the economy. Uh, we'll see right now what is you know going on on that front. As I said, uh, we have a look at the kind of economic advice that the Modi is getting. Uh, still, the appointment of the chief economic advisor is pending, and most probably. Columbia professor Arvind Panagaria is in the front race for that seat. If he comes, you know, he becomes the chief economic advisor, then his advice I'll discuss a bit, you know, also. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dangerous, in fact. Right now, the steps of RBIs are very much ominous, you know, the things which are coming in future. So, so let's start talking about that, you know. First of all, uh, last Tuesday, Rajan announced this, you know, quarterly economic uh, monetary policy and he kept the repo rate uh, uh, same as last time, it's 8%, but he very importantly reduced the statutory liquidity ratio, the percentage of government securities that the banks will, will have to kind of keep with the central bank RBI as a percentage of their total deposit. He reduced that by 50 basis point to 22.5%. 
5%. And by doing that, what he did is he released something like 40,000 40, crore rupees credit into the market. Now, many people are thinking that this release of credit is what is going to boost the economic growth. But all these people are kind of uh, misinformed or misguided. This is this release of 40,000 crore rupees is not going to lift the economy. What in fact it is going to do is it is going to lift, uh, lift different prices over a period of time because this is nothing but inflation. As since you know the beginning of my video economic reports, I am hammering this point: is that printing and creating money out of thin air is not economic growth, it is simply inflation. The increase in the supply of money and credit is inflation. And because of this inflation of money supply, what will happen is that you will have, you will see over a period of time, rise in the prices of different goods and services. Things will become costly. So that is one chief effects of inflation. You will also have distortion into the capital structure and the production structure of the economy. That means uh, boom and the bust cycle. This cheap, you know, money will create artificial boom. Artificial because it is not backed by any kind of saving. And this, because this boom is artificial, it will bust later on when the interest rates will go up. Ultimately, they will go up. The real interest rate, when the real interest rates will go up then that boom will result into bust and at that time we'll have uh, again recession the economy will be in a lot of trouble at that time so this is not genuine economic growth this is not the production of goods and services rising this is just simply printed money flushing into the economy and distorting the capital and production structure the, the resources are transferring from the uh, productive class of the society, the unproductive class of the society, the resources are transferring, uh, transferring from the sector where they are actually needed to the sectors where they are not really needed. You know, sectors like real estate, infrastructure, or building a dam or building a road somewhere where no one is going is not economic growth, right? Uh, producing onions and producing apples and oranges and potatoes and home and grain and food and water and electricity is economic growth because that's what the you know population is actually demanding that that can only be done by the market forces of demand and supply but what RBI has already done is that they have signaled that they are going to listen to Modi and they are going to listen to BJP party's wishes of lowering the interest rate. They have not lowered the repo rate, but in any case, they have released this 40,000 crore rupees into the market, which is inflationary, which will lift the prices later or not exactly right now. Not only that, Modi government is also kind of eyeing to kind of start all these stored infrastructure projects. When this infrastructure projects are something like uh, 20 lakh crore rupees, that's a huge amount. I don't know from where they're going to get all the money to start all this project. Obviously, they're going to monetize the debt which they're going to accumulate, right? Because they'll have to go into debt to fund all these programs. They'll have to print a lot of money. And this is nothing but inflation. This is nothing but increasing the supply of money and credit. And as I said, this is not genuine economic growth. Rising GDP numbers hide so many things because it just expresses the market value of different goods and services and market value means prices. If the prices goes up, the GDP numbers will go up, but that doesn't mean the production of real goods is economic goods is rising. You know, what is happening is whatever goods are available, the stock of goods is being transferred from the people who really want them, you know. Uh, to the people who are kind of well connected with the government, from the common man to the government, from the productive class to the unproductive class. Those people who will get this freshly printed money to their hand initially, they are the ones who are going to get this uh, scarce given stock of you know economic goods into their hand. All the people who are going to get this uh, newly printed note in their hands, in the end, they will see higher prices and they will be deprived of all the you know, production of this economic growth. So printing money and starting, starting all these infrastructure projects is not actually economic growth. Uh, no matter how hard Narendra Modi is going to try, if as long as he's going to follow the same economic policies of interventionism and Keynesianism, government fiscal policies, starting infrastructure projects and public works and this and that, 
economy is not going to become alive, it's not going to recover because that kind of policy is the cause of the you know troubles with the economy. Keynesianism, interventionism, middle of the road, socialist policies is what is crewing our economy. What we need is not more government, what we need is, need is less government or the best thing is no government. Hands off policies, lazy, fair policy is the best policy, right? Allow the market to liquidate all the male investments and then start afresh again. Only then the economy will have genuine, will experience genuine economic growth. As, as long as that is not happening, nothing good is going to come out from all these economic policies. In fact, what is happening is that, as I said, this this uh, Columbia professor, Erwin Panagaria, who is going to become, most probably going to become chief economic advisor of Narendra Modi, uh, when he was asked, you know, recently in an interview by the reporter that, what do you think, when can you bring down the market interest rate? Because businessmen are asking for that. He said that, look, you know, it depends if the Indian consumers or Indian people, I don't know, he said we, now, we means obviously common men, not the government and other bureaucrats and diplomats and government servants and the crony capitalists who are well connected with the government. They don't care for inflation. It's the common men like uh, you and me who are worried about the rising prices. So he was saying, Panagari was saying that if we, means the common men, are ready to tolerate something like 8 to 10 percent of inflation rate, then there are chances of reducing the market interest rate and then revive the economy. So basically for them, reducing the market interest rate and pushing, flushing economy with paper currency notes, inflation is economic growth, but that's not growth, as I said, that's not genuine growth. It's only going to result into higher prices and transfer of income from productive class to unproductive class. That is what is actually enhancing, you know, widening this gap of inequality between rich and poor because all these one percentage people are well connected with the government so they are the ones who are becoming richer and richer poor person are becoming poor and poorer, poorer and poorer and for that market is not responsible for that capitalism is not responsible we don't have any free market right now we don't have any capitalism genuine capitalism right now what we have is fascism what we have is what we call crony capitalism where the corporatist businessmen, the business tycoons like Adanis and Gorillas and Taras and Ambanis, they are in bed with the government and their cronyism, you know, is looting the public, looting the you know common man. So this eight to ten percent inflation is going to kill all of us. Right now, inflation is running at already double this. The official figures are showing them into five percent, but it's all manipulated. If we are going to tolerate 8 to 10 percent, what Panagari is saying that let the government, Modi government, allow to steal 8 to 10 percent of common man's income every year to kind of revive the economy. I don't know what kind of revival is this. How can you, you know, help the poor people and common men by stealing 8 to 10 percent of their total wealth annually? Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but as I said, you know. This guy is only going to print money, create, going to create another artificial boom, which will later on result into a big bust. And I don't think so. The economy is really going to recover. What we need is genuine growth, and for that we need hands of policy. We don't need more government. We need less government. But I, I pretty much doubt that Modi is going to do that because he's an intervention. He's the fastest, you know, you know, guy, and he's going to work with the businessman, and he's going to. Print a lot of money, you know, he's going to pressurize RBI, he's already pressurizing and I think Rajan has given into him, you know, his demands and reduced the SLR. So that is what I'm expecting, you know, as we are moving on. As I said, nothing much is coming out from Modi government and the finance minister on Jaitley. Let's see what kind of policy they're going to come out with. Whatever they're going to come out with is going to be, you know, kind of harmful for the economy because they're going to do more, not less. If they come out and say that we are going to dismantle bureaucratic departments and we're going to dismantle all the red tapes and intervene and these acts and that's regulation and that regulation and they're going to allow the market to work on its own, they're going to allow, you know, free market to work on its own, we're going to follow this fair policy, then something good can happen. But don't expect that from Modi or from any of the other government. They like intervention, they like to keep the power into their hands. 
they are not going to give up their power. So as long as that is not happening, I don't think so. We are going to see any changes whatsoever. And see, the stock market is booming right now. That's an asset bubble. Whatever money the world central bankers have printed and kind of you know uh, released into market that is entering the stock market. So the real inflation we are seeing in the stock market is I think right now zooming something like 24,500 points PSC Sensex. But that's artificial bubble. Someday that is going to bust. I cannot tell you when, but it's very much dangerous situation right now in the stock market. This is the asset bubble. This is not genuine growth. Whatever money they're printing is entering into the stock market, speculative money. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to wait for Narendra Modi and his government and finance minister Aranjit to come out with something concrete. But as I said, what they're going to do is just more intervention. That's it. But in any case, we'll analyze all these things as I go along. I'm going to be more regular now because I think things have settled down now. We have a new government. Right now, Modi is going to uh, be very busy with his foreign tours. Going to spend a waste lot of taxpayers' money. I don't know what you know good will come out of from all these foreign trips. But in any case, he's looking more on foreign policy right now than on the economic. But in any case, when they will come up with some kind of you know very concrete agenda, will well, I will discuss them. I'll, I'll analyze them. Uh, but right now, as I said, they have created more inflation, and we are going to be into trouble. Economy is not going to come out of this mess as long as government is doing more. We don't need government to do more. What we need is government to do less and less and ultimately do nothing. All right, then. Thank you very much for watching me. I'll be back with you soon. Good night.